When thinking of gaming peripherals, G-Skill is definitely not the first company that comes to mind. Most people know G-Skill for their storage and memory solutions for gaming PCs, but in the wake of a lot of success in that industry, they moved on to make other products like mouse pads, headphones, keyboards, and mice. And now they're competing with big computer peripheral companies like Logitech and Corsair. And they just recently released a RGB mechanical keyboard and RGB gaming mouse, and they sent them out for me to review. So this is the KM780 and MX780 from G-Skill, and here is my full review. First up, the different choices when purchasing. The keyboard comes in two variants, allowing you to choose between MX Brown and MX Red switches. I went for the brown as I do a lot of typing and prefer the brown switches over the reds for that purpose, but your decision may vary and the ability to choose is nice. Just taking one look at the design language of these products, you can tell that they were designed with gamers in mind. Sharp edges accompanied with exposed screws, metal tubing, and brushed aluminum give the keyboard a very industrial look. The build of the mouse is nothing special, constructed mostly out of plastic. But of course, the RGB lighting brings it all together. When using the keyboard at night, the multicolored LEDs reflect off the brushed aluminum base plate under the keys and create a really cool glowing effect that I'm not sure the camera does enough justice. The mouse also has a much more customizability options for the LEDs than I was expecting. There are seven different areas that you are able to customize individually, creating some pretty funky combinations if that's what you're into. On the keyboard, I do wish the multimedia and macro buttons were RGB as well because since they're a fixed red, they do clash with some color combinations on the keyboard. Now for the accessories. The keyboard comes with a detachable wrist rest and a little box that clips to the tubing and holds the 10 replaceable gaming keycaps along with a keycap remover. The gaming keycaps are colored red, have a more textured service, and the WASD keys are angled helping you find them easier without having to look. I didn't use these gaming keycaps too much because I'm not a very avid PC gamer and the, the time it would take to change out those keycaps every time I played an FPS game just simply wasn't worth it. The mouse is physically customizable in three ways, starting with the ambidextrous replaceable side grips catering to both left and right handed users. Nice touch. They are held in place securely by magnets and underneath those grips on each side are the inserts for the two optional 4.5 gram weights for those who prefer a heavier mouse. In addition to those adjustable features, there is also a height adjustable palm rest that you can change with the hex key included and that's about it for the accessories for the mouse. Now for my personal experience with these two peripherals. Using the keyboard was, for the most part, a painless and enjoyable experience. As far as the build is concerned, G-Skill wanted to make a keyboard appear to be as premium as possible without breaking the bank. The plastic backing, I assume that was used to cut cost, bothered me initially when I took it out of the packaging, but I soon forgot about it. The soft grip plastic on the sloped wrist rest gives the keyboard great ergonomics. There are a few pass-throughs on the back that are convenient but also expected of a keyboard at this price point, and there is a switch that allows for full end key rollover. There is a USB pass-through, a 3.5mm microphone in, and a 3.5mm audio out port. The macro keys were also very easy to program. Simply press the macro record button in the top left of the keyboard, press the macro key that you wish to record, type out the desired input, and press the macro record button again to end the recording. If you don't care about the exact timing between key presses, you can call it quits there and you're good to go, but if you do care about that timing, you can tweak it even further in the driver software. You can do so by opening the software and selecting the macro option in the top right corner. Then in the macro drop now menu, you'll be able to see and select the macros you have created. You're able to change the delay between all the key presses and key releases if you wish to make it even more customizable. The software does not yet auto save your changes to the keyboard, so for that you have to click the customize tab and select the save to device memory option. The software does have a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, it works like a charm. Lighting is very customizable within the software and you're able to create a lot of cool effects as you would expect from an RGB keyboard. Uh, I'll turn the lighting on right now. The flickering that you see, is, it's not actually flickering, that's just how the camera picks it up. And since it is new software, you should expect a couple of bugs that will be worked out in the future. But my biggest complaint is that it's two separate softwares for the mouse and the keyboard. It should just be one software that you can toggle which one you're controlling, but instead it's two different programs and that's a little bit of a hassle to deal with. I collaborated with a semi-professional CSGO player for the mouse because I wanted somebody who knows a little bit more about what they're talking about when it comes to a gaming mouse. I wanted his opinion and there wasn't too much that he liked. The mouse wheel felt very good and the soft matte texture along the mouse made the whole mouse feel pretty good and the sensor could handle some fast movements without stuttering, but that about sums up what he liked about the mouse. 
One of the most important aspects of a gaming mouse is to be able to make fast, precise movements with it. While the center was sufficient, the skates on the bottom of the MX-780 simply did not allow this. They would drag on the mouse pad, randomly causing the accuracy to decrease. I think this in part has to do with the sharp edges of the mouse skates on the bottom of the mouse. All the other mouse, mice, mouse, mices, mouses that I've used have rounded edges around the skates, but instead the skates have sharp edges and I think that might be what's catching on the mouse pad. For both me and my semi-professional CSGO player friend, the side grips would occasionally catch on the mouse pads when we would try to rapidly reset the location and the buttons on the side of the mouth feel extremely flimsy. Finally, the ergonomics of the mouse. They just aren't that great. Yes, it looks really cool and the design is cool and from a design and look standpoint, uh, G-Skill did a great job, but from an actual ergonomics and use standpoint, it's very uncomfortable to use. And while I was using it, I found myself going back to my Logitech G602 very often because it just annoyed my hand to deal with it. That about wraps this up. Keep in mind that G-Skill's gaming peripheral department is still in its infancy relatively, so in future generations they're going to work out a lot of the problems that I mentioned today, but these products do show promise and I did enjoy using them in my time that I've had with them. Thank you for watching, subscribe to see more content, and as always, stay classy.